All right, guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're going to roll with it. It's a new style of video. I'm going to trial it and you can let me know what you think. But this is going to explain to you all about calories. It's going to be more educational style. We're going to be talking about facts. We're going to be talking about the reality of what we've done with our clients over the last 10 years in every single presentation that we do like this. So I've, I've spent a lot of time preparing this video to make sure that it's going to be valuable for you. So make sure you do let us know if you do like this style. But we're going to be bringing them to you a lot more frequently anyway. It's going to be very raw. Um, I much prefer that rather than doing the real type content on Instagram, uh, TikTok, that type of stuff because you can't explain your point and you can't learn from it. So my favorite style of watching videos and what I like to watch is YouTube videos. I learn so much from it. Podcasts, I learn so much from audiobooks. So I wanted to do something like that in return for you guys that feel the same. But anyway, we're going to be diving in with a very basic topic to begin with, but it's only basic and it's only simple when you really know how. Now, this is a combination, like I said, it's always going to be a combination of our logic with what we've done with clients combined with science. So evidence-backed research um, that we know does work and is proven to work, but also with a little hint, a little sprinkle of bro science. So calories, how does it work? Let's go forward and just start off this presentation by defining exactly what calories is. So a calorie is a unit of energy. It measures the energy in food. The It's essential for understanding energy balance in the body. Now, very simple, very quick here. It is literally a measurement tool. That's all it is. So when people say calorie counting doesn't work, it doesn't make any sense. It's like saying that um, <laughs> measuring something with a measuring tape doesn't work. It just means that the person actually applying those measurements may not be doing it correctly. Um, and you can't argue science. It's literally the law of thermodynamics, which we'll get to in a second. So measuring calories definitely does work. Um, it's just how accurately, the question is how accurately, number one, has is the food content in the first place? Is the labeling? Is the apps that we're using? Um, and also... Are those targets that you're setting yourself correct for the goal that you've got in mind? Those are the questions you should be asking yourself. Now, why calories matter? Calories provides the energy needed for the body functions. Essential for physical activities, growth, and metabolism, which a lot of those things we do need, they're essential, um, is understanding calories helps you manage your body as well. So that's a crucial thing to, to realize is that this is a tool to better look after your health, not only just to get in better body composition to improve your body composition lose body fat gain muscle mass whatever the goal is but it's more important for just understanding how to control your own energy balance so you need to know this energy storage as well so overconsumption will lead to fat gain it's it's pretty obvious right you can't really argue it there's so much research behind this now that no matter what diet you look at no matter what food groups you look at if the net result is that you are consuming more calories than what your body needs um, or what your body is utilizing during those days or the the time frame you're looking at then you're going to store that as as that energy is going to be stored as body fat more than likely um there are other forms of storing it of course um there's other forms of your body getting energy as well when it comes down to breaking down muscle, you know, actually utilizing the proteins, transferring that over into um, energy that can be used. That's a complex process and something that people worry way too much about, especially when they're in a deficit, trying to lose body fat and keep as much muscle mass as possible. Um, it's really, really going to be difficult for that to happen. So yeah, that's like last case scenario. But more more often than not, if you overconsume calories, it's going to be stored as body fat and that's what tends to compound over time. Um, and it is a compounding effect like the more body fat you've got that you've got sorry the easier it then becomes to store body fat as well so that's why you see a lot of these you know intense athletes or bodybuilders with low body fat levels can eat so much um, and they can push the limits of what's possible because they haven't got that much storage in the first place so that is definitely something that i haven't explained it fully there so maybe a lot of people will call me out on that but that is the truth of it so it's better to be leaner have more muscle mass and you can eat a lot more as well now let's talk about the calories in food groups so macros um, and you can save this for later as well by the way um, <laughs> macros so we got protein carbs and fats right it's simply a breakdown of different food groups that contain calories um, now macros you then have micros if you want to go down and deep dive into that level we will be getting there with these courses that we're going to be bringing out and the presentations on youtube um, but let's just look at the basics right protein is four calories per gram and that is gram of um, per gram of actual protein by the way it's not per gram of what you consider a protein food group this is where people get confused as well we have this question a lot where people say well i eat 200 grams of chicken breast so is that 200 grams of protein no it's just 
humans like to categorize things and we have always you know found it easier if we put certain foods into certain groups but the truth is every single food that you look at and i'm going to make a blanket statement here that's probably going to be incorrect but every single food group you look at will more than likely contain all three of these macros but more often than not it tends to be heavily in favor of one over the other Okay, so if you look at proteins, you look at these food groups such as chicken breast, turkey breast, uh, steak. Steak has a lot of fats in it as well. Salmon has a lot of fats in it as well. But they're still considered protein foods, right? They contain the majority protein. But the weight of the food is what you're looking at when you're weighing the, the weight of the food. It's not necessarily calculating the total amount of protein in there. That's when you need to know the nutritional information and the nutritional, nutritional values of these foods to understand it. So I hope that makes sense. You've basically got up here, you've got the weight of the food that you're actually weighing. Um, and then you've got to work out from that weight of that food by searching on the internet or looking at the back of the label how much protein is actually in that food anyway so you work out how much you're having uh, from that meal and then overall f for the end of the day to hit your targets carbs is four calories per gram net um, and fats is nine calories per gram net as well so fat is the most dense in terms of per gram but that doesn't mean it's, it's something you should avoid if you're not looking to gain body fat what it does make you aware of is foods with high fats in them fat content um it's going to be very easily easy for you to eat a small volume of that food for example a teaspoon of peanut butter um, considered a, a fat source um that's going to be very easy for you to just bank up those calories which is a good tool for someone that's struggling with putting on body weight um but if you're not looking to put on body weight, it can be a, a huge negative factor for you. Now, there's one more as well, alcohol, right? Um, and I want you to guess in the comments as well how many calories per gram you think is in alcohol, right? And that's per net gram of alcohol as well, again. So it's not like per pint. Um, I'm talking about per net gram of alcohol compared to these. Uh, so if we go back, how many calories per gram do you think it is? Comment below. Okay, seven calories per gram. So somewhere in between the uh, the fat content and, and the um, protein and carbs as well. But this is something to be aware of because it makes you realize even if you are being smart with your calories and you're going out on the weekend, you're not having the calorie-dense alcohol choices and you're just having, let's say, you know, a vodka with a Diet Coke, you're still going to be consuming vodka and there's still quite a dense amount of calories. It's like, think think of it as like tea, teaspoons of peanut butter. You're still going to have a lot of calories from that over time, despite it looking like there's not much in it. Or you've done the research and you know there's not much in there. Um, it still will compound over time. So just be aware of that. Now, the scientific evidence that we talk about behind this, right? There are long-term studies to prove calorie surpluses increase weight gain. So... That's good if you're trying to put yourself in a slight surplus for muscle growth. It's bad if you're trying to avoid gaining body fat. Um, we have 10 years of coaching experience now with over 1,500 people that we've worked with gaining results with a simple method of calorie tracking. We use this as the backbone behind everything we do and every successful coach I know and I've had the pleasure of working not only in groups but one-to-one -one with some of the best physique coaches in the world um, and they all use this as a backbone. There, there is literally zero debate with it with anyone that has some degree of intelligence or results working with other people, not just themselves of their own theories so there's no debate here um my personal experience as well manipulating my body for my competitive bodybuilding back in the day um it was only a few years ago to be fair um but just an example there some some proof that i've done this myself as well and i've seen the differences in how just 50 calories or 30 calories can make a difference when you compound that over like seven days or four weeks um it does make a hell of a difference and and that's something i've dived into deeply myself now Again, proving this not just with myself, but with other people we've worked with. Um, we've had re we've worked with real people. We get real results. We've got 100 plus reviews on Trustpilot. Um, we can see that if you're in a consistent calorie deficit, um, then you will lose body fat. The problem is that it's very hard to be in a consistent calorie deficit if you want to enjoy life and you want to make sure that you're not actually down down regulating your metabolism because me metabolic adaptation is a thing uh, it's something we've experienced and that's why we utilize fat loss blocks with our clients during the phases that we go through something we've talked about in other videos and we will be doing presentations on now Kerry is an example of someone that's completely transformed from somewhere where most people would feel completely defeated and be like what's the point they wouldn't even try to just transform their life around and you've got to think as well if someone's got themselves to that point then do they really think it's possible to then actually 
go the other way completely when they've clearly struggled before. Now, he managed to do that and he enjoys all his favorite foods. He tracked and he was flexible throughout. Um, so yeah, it is possible just to give you a bit of motivation there. Now, the myths versus facts that I want to break down, right? Are all calories the same? Um, technically, they are not the same because when you look on a deeper level, the micronutrient level, there is deeper levels than that as well. But you can clearly see very quickly that not all of these foods are the same. But if you're looking to just control body composition, it will literally just come down to, to calories. So skipping meals will also help reduce calorie intake. Um, <laughs> I say that with confidence. I'm joking. It's definitely not something you should definitely do. Um, meal frequency is a tool that you can use to increase hunger or decrease hunger, depending on which way you want to use it and how you want to use it. But I definitely wouldn't use it for that reason. Um, I would use it more for just flexibility around your day and find something that just fits into your life. If you're the type of person that enjoys eating and you want to be eating more frequently, then do that if you've got the freedom to do it. If you're someone that just needs to prep a few meals because you're at the house the most of the day, then maybe decrease the frequency, save the calories for when you're back home and you want to enjoy a big meal with the family in the night. Um, and low fat diets are, are always better. That's another myth as well. Um, it's something that is definitely, definitely not true. Um, I've seen great results with people that do high, high carb, low fat, but also high fat, low carb. Um, it depends on your preferences at the end of the day, what type of foods you actually like to eat. So here's some implementation strategies you can use today to actually go away and implement what you've learned. Um, if you've learned anything, if it's just kind of giving you a um, sort of reminder of the basics, then hopefully that's good for you as well. But you should definitely track, use apps and weigh your food. I know people think that weighing your food some, for five seconds before you put it on your plate is somehow the most difficult thing that someone should do and it's toxic and it's just ridiculous, right? Just like you would measure how much petrol you're putting in your car, how much diesel or how much fuel you're putting into your engine. You, would, you should do the same with your own body if you want it to look a certain way, if you want to feel a certain way. You shouldn't just be guesstimating everything. Um, I'm not saying to weigh every single meal. And the goal for us as well, the way we work with our clients, is once we've done the job, we've got you to a certain position, we want this to be sustainable. We want you to enjoy your life. So what we do is we just end up getting to a point where we only just weigh, us, weigh the food for one day per week. Because what that does do is it resets what things should look like. Because a lot of people, and me included, over time, you forget what certain weights look like. And naturally, if you're hungry, you start to add on a little bit more as well. So that's something to think about, definitely. Um, choose volume when hunger does strike you, right? So what I'm saying is here, you could have two foods that are 200 calories each. But one, you could look at a veggie for a great example compared to like a cake. We've done an example on this before. The amount of volume of food you could fill on your plate for 200 calories of green veg compared to a cake it's mental the difference and that's only going to spike sugars and you're going to spike hunger with that as well so be smart if you're hungry um, and hit your protein not just the calories that's another one as well so if you were to look at another variable that you need to track other than calories to lose body weight then you need to look at protein like that's another major factor and it's going to just it's, it's just the all-important tool you see it marketed everywhere now it's the buzzword with food they stick protein on anything in the supermarkets and you're going to buy it but in reality, it is because it is it is so powerful. It's good for growth and repair. It's good for satisfying hunger. It's good for increasing TEF. So you'll increase your thermic effect of feeding. So the more calories you eat from protein, the more calories you burn just digesting it compared to any other food group. So there's so many positives to it that we can't even talk about in this video, but it's definitely worth noting down. Now, what are you going to do? So this is where you need to think about now. You've learned all this. You may know it already, but what is your long-term vision? This is the first thing we talk about when we speak to our clients or, or potential clients. What's the actual long-term goal? If we were to strip away any limiting beliefs, what are you looking to achieve in the long game? Um, and then we can break down and explain how realistic that is. And do you really think that you can't achieve your dream body in like five years time? And that's where we, we speak to people. We try and Break away the limiting belief. Stop just thinking three months from now, six weeks from now. Like, let's think long, long term. You're going to be five years older anyway. You might as well be there in a, in a shape that you really want to be in and you're proud of. Um, so where are you now compared to that? Like, what, what do we need to do to get there? What phases are needed? And then we can actually work out the calories needed then for right now. The next steps, the actionable steps. Because... 
the thing is a dream without an actual plan is is well no sorry a goal without without a plan is just a dream right you're just dreaming you need to put actionable goals in place actionable steps that you can take straight away so hopefully with our calorie calculator we give this away for free um if you want to go to our website on pvfitnessacademy.com you can get access to that now and it works out specifically for you you answer about 10 questions and you'll know exactly what you need to do um, and the last thing as well is the game plan call. Like if you are looking for one-to-one support or you're looking just to speak to an expert to find out what you need to do, then we offer that for free with a game plan call. We map this out for you. We look at where you are now, what your struggles are, and we give you that phase plan. We do it on the call and you can either take it away and, and attempt it for free or you can work with our team. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and actually just subscribe because we are putting a lot of effort into making sure that there's valuable educational content that you can action straight away. As soon as you watch this video, um, you can change your behavior for the better. So thank you and we'll see you soon.